Hi guys and welcome to the next episode of our multiplayer JavaScript game development series. My name is Yuri and I'm super excited about what we will do today because we finally reached the level when we will be writing multiplayer game logic. So far we have this little networking application that can connect to the server, receive this nice HTML back, render it on the screen and people can exchange chat messages. So if somebody says hi, everyone else will get that hi back. However, there is no matchmaking logic so far, so people cannot join the game and they then they cannot play. In the more sophisticated games, there will be some sort of lobbies or some sort of matchmaking mechanism that will take into the account people's preferences, their friends or their rankings and match people in the optimal way. In this particular game, we will go with a much easier approach and what we will do, whenever there is a new player, if he is alone on the server, he will wait for the second player to come. And once there are two players that want to play, well, we then join them into the game. So what we need to do is we need to check if there is somebody else on the server that is waiting for the game. And to check that, we will create a variable called uh, waiting player. This will be a socket. And initially, when server just starts, it is null. So there is nobody connected so far. Now, whenever there is a, somebody who is connected, we don't just write him a message back. So let's remove this. Maybe, hi, you are connected. We can also remove that. We don't need that message anymore. So we'll say, if there is a waiting player, then that means that waiting player can play with the one who just connected and then they can start a game. So I'll just add a comment here, start a game. And uh, finally, if these two players are playing now, then waiting player is empty. So nobody's waiting for the game so far. Now, otherwise, if the player is connected, but there is nobody who is waiting for the opponent on the server. Well, that will mean that this guy, this socket becomes a waiting player. So waiting player is a socket. And let's be nice maybe. And whenever we have one of these events, either you're connected and you're the first one or you're connected and there's another player waiting for the match. Let's write a little message so that we know that this matching logic is somehow working. So firstly, if you're the waiting player, just for this, that player, we will write a message, um, something like waiting player, emit message, and we will write waiting for an opponent. That's good enough. However, if there are two players and they are ready to play, then we will send a message to both of those players. So let's say socket is the one who just connected. We'll emit him a message. Game starts. And the other guy also should receive the same message. Waiting player should receive the same message. Emit message, game starts, right? And since I'm a big fan of a clean code, right, I don't like to copy paste things. So this two lines are just terrible for me because they are doing the same thing and they are writing the same message and I don't like to copy paste the code. So how we can make this code a little bit better because that's what you actually should do each time when you're writing the code, you wrote some code, think, can you do that better? And in this case, we can. What we will do here, we will just write sock and waiting player. We will add them into the array. So here is the little array. And then for each element of that array, we will just emit to that socket, we will emit that, that message. So I'll copy paste this part and sock s emit message game starts. So you understand what's happening here. This is a little bit tricky syntax, but you will often see it in the code. When you join two variables into the array, just for the sake of doing something with each and every variable. For both variables, those are the sockets, we are sending them a message game starts. And obviously, I don't need this line anymore. Alright, so now it's a good time to check if this logic will work or it will not. Actually, no, it will not work. I see the box straight away. We're first saying that waiting player is null and then we're trying, trying to send something to that player. Obviously, it will just throw an exception. So now that will work. 
In just a couple of videos, I'll show you guys how to do the unit testing for these cases, and it will be much easier to prove that something works with the help of unit tests rather than with the real code. So, um, as you see, here's already some output that we have written. The game starts and waiting for the opponent. Why that happens? Because socket IO client is trying to reconnect each time when we restart the server. And as you remember, we have this node mom at the background running and restarting our application each time when I save the file. So, as I write the code, I hit Control S or Command S if you're on Mac, and node mon restarting the server, and then our browser with socket IO reconnecting each time. That's how you see those messages coming on the screen. But let's do the fresh test. I'm hit hitting refresh, waiting for the opponent. So this guy just connected. There is no one else on the server to play with. And this guy, again, I'll refresh to reconnect. We're reconnecting. And he received game starts because he already had an opponent and this guy also receives game starts. So that means that we matched those guys together. Now the only thing that we need to do is write some sort of the game logic for these guys so that they can exchange turns and we can say who won, who lost and what is the score maybe. So let's do that. The first thing that I will do, I'll probably create a separate file to hold the logic for rock, paper, scissors. I'll call it rpsgame.js and I'll put it in the server right near our server.js file. Okay, so this file will hold a class that will represent a single game, single running instance between two players. And it will encapsulate, it will hold all the logic of rock, paper, scissors game mechanics, right? So making it a separate file, not mixing it all together in the server will make it easy to later substitute rock, paper, scissors with another game that has the similar mechanics. If you will want to make another game let's say five in a row that we will, by the way, also make in this course, it will be easy to substitute the logic of rock, paper, scissors with five in a row if you keep things clean and organized. So in this file, we will create a new class. I'll call it RPS game. And this class will need a constructor, I think, right? Because the class accepts two players, player one and player two. Those players are the sockets just raw sockets, we're not wrapping them in some sort of higher level objects, just this raw sockets that we will save here in this class. Let's just save them. So this will become a class field. And P2 gonna be P2. So what I'm doing here, I'm adding the underscores for P1 and P2. If you're wondering why am I doing that, this is just to indicate that these variables are private. I like to make sure that in my code, I clearly see what are the public parts of the API, the parts that I can use from the other parts of my program, and what are the internal parts of the API that are private, and I shouldn't be touching them outside of RPS game. So this is my sign that this is a private part the underscore sign here. You can follow this convention or you cannot follow this convention. It is completely up to you. It will not really change the outcome of the program too much. So now why don't we move the message that the game has started from this uh, part that is creating the connection and handling the connections to the RPS game. It is a good idea because, well, maybe in some games the message will matter as a part of the gameplay. Maybe you will need to tell who is the first player, who is the second player. So the message probably belongs to the game, not to the networking logic. So what I will do here, I will take this code and I will move it to RPS game. And obviously I need to make sure that my variables are having right names. So here they are known as P1 and P2. And for each, we say, let's say, rock, paper, scissors, start, starts. I think it starts. It will sound more natural, I guess. So we are emitting this message inside of the constructor of RPS game. All right, so now we need to make sure that we can reach this class from outside of this file. And to do that, we say module.exports. This is the Node.js syntax for exporting things. And we are exporting RPS game, awesome. Now we can import that back from server.js. Somewhere here, const RPS game will require it from our class RPS game JS. I don't need to put JS extension here, you probably know that. So RPS game, we have it here and let's put it right here when we have start a game comment. 
we're saying new RPS game waiting player and sock who is newly connected player and again I made this error waiting player is null first of course I need to put it after I created the game otherwise I will just pass null here okay so this looks good so far and uh, our game can now be started what will be uh, our next step our next step will be to accept the moves the turns from the players and to do that well we need to do two things firstly we need to support that functionality from the server side and we need to send those turns from the client side so since we are right now on the server why don't we start to write our game logic on the server first so the game logic for rock paper scissors is super super simple we just need to make sure we're capturing the turns from both players and whenever we have both turns we just calculate who has won or who has lost and send back the message to the players saying that here's the game results then we reset and do it over and over and over again first thing that i want to do i probably will extract that into a separate function and instead of keeping players as individual fields i will make them an array so players will be an array of p1 and p2 just the objects that are the socket objects okay now i can rewrite a little bit the function called send to players not rewrite but write players and this function will receive the message that i will need to send and all it will do it will say this uh it should not be players should be players this players and then I copy this code, not copy, but extract this code. So for each players, for each player, let's make it nicer. We're saying I want to emit a message that I just received from the argument of a function. So and this will make my code slightly easier and nicer in the constructor, so straight away. I can say this send to players and uh, I can pass the message rock paper scissors stars so this code is much easier to read and understand what's happening here even though the line numbers the, the amount of lines that you have just written it increased but the readability of the code uh, increased as well because you now see exactly what is the intent of this for each function you're sending the message to the players second thing that we will need to do is we will probably need to have something like on turn because we will need to capture the turns of the players and on turn function what it should know in order to work it should know the turn of course is it rock is it paper or is it scissors and uh, it needs to know the player index so i'll put player index as the first argument and the turn as the second argument so now we will be able to capture the turn somewhere and to capture it i'll add the symmetrical array called turns so we've got a players and we've got a turns and initially since nobody did anything so far this is null this is null you can just leave it empty it will work as well but this way it's probably just easier to read p1 null p2 null so turns is initialized with nulls and whenever i've got a turn I can store this turn in the turns array. Turns in player index equals turn. What I can also do is I can uh, send the message to the single player saying that I received your turn so that the player knows he has some sort of a feedback. He clicks the button, he wants to see something on the screen that server indeed received his message. And to do that, I, I probably will also make another function. Maybe it will be more writing of the code, but send to player. Again, it makes sense just to make sure the code is easier to read. So player index and message. And the code is super, super simple. Players, I'm taking the index, I'm emitting. A message and I'm passing the text so now what I can do here I can say send to player player index you selected and and I can use in a template string the reference to a variable you selected the turn okay good 
So I'm not checking here if the player clicked two or three times or he decided to change his mind and select, um, I don't know, paper instead of the rock, because he doesn't see the turn of the other player yet. So it doesn't really matter at this point, but if you want, you can check if the uh, player, in the, if the turns array is not empty already, that, that means that in this round the player made his turn, then probably you can tell him, hey buddy, you have already made your choice, sorry, wait for the other player, something like this. So I'll do this again, this. Players, for each, for each player, right in a constructor, I want to add an event listener. So whenever the player is sending me the turn, what I will do, I will call on turn. And on turn needs two things. It needs the player index and the turn. So the turn will be passed from the network to us. So it will be here. What about the player index? Well, it's super easy to get because what I can do here is add another variable, I call it idx for index, and it will be passed from for each as the number of the index of the current element that we are looking at right now. So this will be like this. So player index, we're using index to pass it to on turn and on turn should handle the mechanics of saving the turn and telling the player what he selected. So if I did everything correctly, it should work and I really like to get this quick feedback from the code. So I'll restart both game clients here. Rock, paper, scissors start. I should be able to click here rock, paper and scissors and receive back the values. And of course I cannot do that right now because my client side code doesn't yet support it. So it doesn't send the turn values. So what we're gonna do here is we'll write a little bit of client side code as the next step. And see, I'm doing this in little iterations because as I said before, I really like to get a feedback and know that I'm doing things in the right way. I'm moving into the right direction. So instead of implementing the whole game logic on the server first and then realizing, oh, but that will not be compatible with the client for some reason, I like to make it gradual and step-by-step -step approach. So on the client side, I have rock, paper, and scissors, three buttons. And why don't I add event listeners to those buttons? I'll go to client.js file and I'll create another function add button or add turn or add button listeners, I don't know. Probably heard that in programming there are only two hard things, which is naming things and invalidating caches and choosing the right names for your functions is really important. So add button listeners whenever, and of course I will need to call this function somewhere, so I'll do that straight away add button listeners, I'm calling this function. So what this function will do, it has three buttons called rock, paper, and scissors. Those are the IDs of the buttons and also these are the turns that the buttons will be sending. So for each of those buttons, what I will do, I will receive the ID. First thing is to find the element on the page with document get element by ID and it will receive the ID. So now I got the button. I will not test if the button is on the page. I kind of assume that if I created the page, then there will be a button called rock, button called paper, button called scissors. So for each button, we will need to add event listener. And whenever this button is clicked, click. What I want to do, I want to emit a turn which is the same as ID. So I'm just emitting a string that is either rock, paper or scissors. And obviously each button will emit its own, uh, its own value. So rock will emit rock, paper will emit paper, scissors will emit scissors. So I'm adding three event listeners here. And if I did everything correctly, should work. Okay, waiting for opponent, opponent, rock, paper, scissors, game starts. Paper, you selected paper. I can select the paper now. And uh, what I need to fix, I need to fix this scrolling thingy to make sure that I see the most recent turn and the other, uh, other player should also see what he selected. Okay, good. So I have the basics in place. I can send the turns and my server receives the turns and uh, it sends back, yes, I received that turn. So why don't I finish the game logic now? So if I go to RPS game, 
the last part that I need to do is to implement the, well, the test who has won. And we'll do that in the next video because it's the subject for the other video, how to check in rock, paper, scissors who is the winner. You might think that, well, it's easy to just compare all the values together, but I will show you one interesting thing that instead of writing like, I don't know, 50 lines of code comparing what are the values and who won, there is a very nice and elegant way to describe this in just like five lines of code to test the game win conditions. And I'll show you that in the next video. But in this video, I just want to make sure that I can finish the round and I can tell players that round is finished and start the next round. I'll add another function, check game over. Sounds good. And I'll call it after each and every turn. This check game over. So what check game over will do? It will test It will test the turn. So I oftentimes do this little thing. I create a local variable called the same way as the field. Why I do that? The only reason to do that is to make the code slightly more readable. If turns zero and turns one are some values, what I can do then? Then I know that the game is over, effectively. Someone more won, maybe it was a draw, but the game is over. So what I can say and say send to players, I will send them the message game over and then just to test that I indeed captured those turns I can add turns join like this so this way I will know who selected what and finally if indeed it turned out that this is a game over I need to reset the turns turns equals null, null, like this. So this way we are resetting the value of the turns and players can start over again. They can again exchange the turns. So let's see if this logic works because if it works, we can pretty much say that we implemented the very basic game workflow, right? Now how much lines? 40 lines so far, 44 lines of code so far for a simple multiplayer game logic implementations. Let's see if that works. Refresh, waiting for opponent, game starts. This guy selects rock. Now, if the second guy selects value, the round should stop and I should be able to do the next round. And I should see the messages as well. So this guy selects paper, you selected paper, game over, all over rock. Oh, I forgot to add a space here. Rock, paper. So we captured the turns correctly. This guy selected rock, this guy selected paper. And we see the message that it is the next round and we can again choose rock and this guy chooses rock it should be a draw and by the way this thing is not scrolling it really pisses me off but in the next video i will fix this uh, scrolling thing really quickly to see the latest message from the server but as you see our game flow works we are having rounds we're capturing the turns and the only thing that we have left to do is to build the logic to actually check who won and who lost and that will be our task for the next video thank you very much for watching guys i hope that you like this video we're finally getting there we have the multiplayer game rock paper scissors and in the next video we will even check the end game conditions who won who lost or was it a draw so stay with me subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video see you in the upcoming videos bye